hear me this time? Yeah. Woohoo! All right, it's me again. Um, one of the things that we wanted to make sure that we did with this conference was explain to people what is going on, not just in this country, but around the world, essentially, with uh, the conversations that are happening. How is regulation being developed? What are people talking about? What are the issues? How are we going about dealing with those issues? So that's why I'm really excited that my next guest is with us. Um, Congressman Emmer has been a absolute force for crypto on the Hill. And with us here today is his legislative aide, Lizzie Fallon. So please welcome her to the stage. Thank you. Hi, right, Liz. Thanks, Dave. All right. Thank you all for having me. Lizzie, everyone, everyone, Lizzie. Nice to meet you. So um, let's start off by kind of setting the stage. Congressman Emmer has been involved in this for a number of years now. What did it, what did it look like when he first started? What did the Hill, what were the debates, what, did it, what was the environment like? There wasn't a lot. Uh, Congressman Emmer joined Congress in 2015. Um, the Blockchain Caucus started in 2014 by two uh, members at the time, Mick Mulvaney, who then became chief of staff with Trump, and Jared Polis, who's uh, a Democrat, now governor of Colorado. Um, and it was a very small group then. It existed, uh, more of an educational vehicle, very you know low key. Um, and underground, but really powered by you know a, a, a shared um, a, a shared support for this industry, for blockchain technology and cryptocurrency, and the promises and benefits that it can bring to the United States and Americans, and the opportunities, um, and a shared uh, idea of Congress's role in supporting that. Um, so my boss got into this in 2015, joined the Blockchain Caucus, and became a co-chair, uh, I think, in 2017. So allow me to summarize what many out there are thinking right now. The blockchain what? Right. What's a caucus? Um, a caucus is pretty much what you make out of it. It sounds really official. Uh, on the Hill, you know, in Congress, we have committees, which are super official. My, uh, he's also on the Financial Services Committee, and that's where legislation moves. Um, and Congress is a very partisan institution. I've heard that rumor. Yeah, right. Very, it, the, the committees are partisan. Uh, whoever's in majority is dictating what legislation moves. A caucus, though, it sounds very official, but it's whatever you want to make it. You can sign up. You can register a caucus pretty easily. It can be about anything. There's a cigar caucus, so. I want to join that. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> they have fun happy hours, apparently. I'm very pro that. Uh-huh. Um, so when I started a year ago uh, with this office, um, I, I have two jobs, the Financial Services Committee Portfolio and then also the Blockchain Caucus. Um, and I'm you know, here in, in the capacity of the Blockchain Caucus today. But uh, when I started, you know, there were years, uh, like six years of um, legislative proposals, oversight initiatives, that uh, this bipartisan group of members had worked on. And uh, the co-chairs range in, in, uh, in their partisanship. So we have progressive caucus members, we have freedom caucus members, and then we have moderate members like my boss and Darren Soto, who are two of the co-chairs. Um, I'm sorry, wait, I just want to stop you for a second. So um, I thought you said it was bipartisan. Bipartisan. Is that and a it, thing? Is that allowed? Well, actually, it's almost like nonpartisan in some ways because here we have members that span the political spectrum uh, from far right to far left to the middle who all agree uh, that we need to foster this innovation in, the, in this country, bring these opportunities to Americans, um, and approach uh, and have, you know, they share the same congressional approach to that, uh, which is overseeing our regulators, uh, making sure that they provide legislative or reg uh, regulatory clarity, um, and making sure they work with industry and they don't close the door uh, when they try to talk to them, which is uh, obviously a big challenge, um, and, um, and also legislative proposals when necessary. So, you know, there's this bank of these great legislative proposals that are supported by industry groups like Blockchain Association, supported by industry. Um, they have e e tons of members on these legislative bills and, and uh, on these letters to regulators, but nobody knows about the Blockchain Caucus a year ago. Nobody knew about it, so. We did. Right. <laughs> now you know about it. Just um, saying. <laughs> Just gonna throw that out there. There you go, it exists. 
So, but, so why is it so important then? Because one of the things that we not just as a company, but as an industry advocate for is common sense regulation, yeah. which almost sounds like an oxymoron, right? I mean, I don't know many industries that want to be regulated more than they currently are, and yet that level of stability is what we're yearning for because that's going to allow us to understand where, where the borders are, mm -hmm. what are the rules of the game so that we can continue to innovate. Mm -hmm. So in your experience, like what's been, what's been the most difficult thing in terms of just either educating not just members of the caucus, but then people who they're interacting with? Right. So that's the biggest challenge, is education. It's not a partisan battle, it's an education battle. We have a lot of old members of Congress, but we also have a lot of young staff um, who, who work on, on these policy issues for their bosses. And um, the, you know, we wanted to really scale this coalition that we had, this really you know, powerful but small coalition, um, to make it bigger. And how do we do that? We add value to staff by putting on educational briefings. So we'll bring in industry participants, uh, groups like Blockchain Association, we'll talk about timely issues, and we'll reach out to every single staffer on the Hill. So we get, you don't have to, your boss doesn't have to be a member of the Blockchain Caucus to benefit from you know, the, the value that we're adding. You can participate in our briefings, you can come to anything. Um, and I think that's really important because um, you know, now it, that this, you know, you can't ignore crypto anymore. You can't ignore blockchain anymore. This stuff is coming up on, on the committee uh, in both the House and the Senate. And members want to learn more about it. And their staff have attended a blockchain caucus briefing. Oh, what's the blockchain caucus? We've doubled in size and membership which is in the past year uh, because of stuff like that. So I think scale up, scaling the blockchain caucus uh, is going to be really important because this is a group of members that all, like, they wouldn't agree on anything uh, in any other issue area <laughs> ever, but they all agree on this and, and the approach on this. Um, and they have, and you know, that approach is, is, um, is supported by industry groups like Blockchain Association, Digital Chamber, there's a ton of them. Um, it's funny, because the statement that you just made is both equally exciting and terrifying. It, it, and I don't think, I mean, did many of you out there know that there is a lot of bipartisan support because if you read a lot of the punditry and the things that are coming out in the news media, sometimes it's hard to understand or discern what, what's the fact from fiction? What's actually happening versus what is the story that's being told? And I mean, in my opinion, the, the caucus itself, one of the greatest gifts that they have given so far is they're changing the conversation. They're allowing people the freedom to understand, like, I can agree with this, and it's not going to be the end of the world. Mm -hmm. It's not political suicide if you recognize that there are benefits to the technology that's coming out. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a big change in a year. There's also been a messaging change. I feel like uh, for the past however many years, the way, uh, the way staffers and members have been talking about this policy area is, is crypto policy. Uh, there's so obviously so much more to this ecosystem, and crypto powers it. Crypt, you know, cr crypto facilitates it. Um, and one key change that we've made is uh, communicating about Web3, NFTs, all these other things, the future internet, and how it's a more human internet. And that really bridges the partisan divide, and also, like, uh, I guess, you know, there's something for everyone in this space. So. I feel like the biggest challenge that we've had, and we've just kind of had to figure out on the go, is the messaging piece. Because this is uh, such an exciting and innovative space. Um, it's also a really technically complicated uh, space to understand, and the, the policy issues that we handle are, are technically difficult. They take a lot of you know, personal outreach to different offices to, to walk through exactly you know, um, what we're trying to do. So. Uh, the, the messaging tool is really important. Uh, and I think that was one key change that we made successfully. And we saw that play out um, on Wednesday in the Financial Services Committee that hearing. That was awesome. It really was. Like the conversations that were being had, the, the questions that were being asked, it, was n it no longer felt like a series of gotcha questions. Mm -hmm. It felt like, I want to know. Yeah, it was, it was exciting. It was exciting to be there. Uh, and it was an unexpected change. But, uh, you know, you can't ignore this space anymore as, as a politician, as a lawmaker, and as a regulator, because uh, it, it just looks foolish at this point. Just Everybody's to be clear, that was up. not a challenge. 
okay? <laughs> um, so, okay, let's kind of switch gears a little bit and look towards the future. Mm -hmm. And obviously it's hard to kind of prognosticate a little bit, but in, in the best case scenario, what is, tw what is the end of 2022 look like? When you and I are having this conversation next year, what, what is it that we hope that we've accomplished? And I say we because it really is a we thing. It's all of us. It's a we thing. Um, I have a big vision for this. Uh, I Just keep it between you and me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, it, you know, we want the caucus to, to turn from this educational vehicle into a real policy impacting um, force in in Congress, and we see those with like the Progressive Caucus, the Freedom Caucus. These are groups that that can halt legislation, they can push legislation, um, and they have that kind of power. Now they're partisan groups, but there's a, a, a tremendous amount of power that we we can have with this bipartisan group to to uh, have that exact same impact. And uh, so, you know, that that's the goal I think for end of 2022 is to continue building our membership um, to start. You know, we've really, really ramp up messaging on the Blockchain Caucus to have people calling their representatives demanding that they join the Blockchain Caucus um, because as we grow in size and uh, continue our educational efforts, uh, it'll truly be a force to reckon with and, and uh, I feel like a, a good resource for, um, for industry. And that's, that's our goal here is to help industry uh, to keep these opportunities in this country. Uh, for our constituents, to have a strong economy. Um, these are all goals that, uh, you know, everybody shares, so. So then, I think you touched on something very interesting. Um, this might shock you, I'm a bit of a cynic. Do you mean <laughs> calling your elected representatives yeah. makes a difference? It does, actually, yeah, you think that those calls just like go nowhere. No, there's people that, that uh, you know, it's our job to write down how many calls we get and what they're about. We report them, um, and you know the member sees exactly what the top issues that their constituents care about. So calling or emailing your representative and telling them, hey, I want you to join the Blockchain Caucus, if enough people do it, they're at least going to say, hey, Stafford, can you look into the Blockchain Caucus? How can we maybe join? What is that? Find out about it, so. And then when they find out it's bipartisan, that actually helps. Yeah. You know, because that, that's a good, that's a win for any elected official being part of anything bipartisan because it makes them look like they're able to get things done and move forward. We, yeah, and it's a trusted resource, and it's a trusted resource, not just because it's bipartisan, but because it, we have members who, who work on things together uh, who are on all parts of the spectrum. So if you're AOC, you can reach out to Ro Khanna about the Blockchain Caucus, blockchain issues, crypto issues, Web3 issues, uh, and, and you know, you can trust uh, their perspective and their knowledge on this. And, and their knowledge and perspective is shared by uh, all of the Blockchain Caucus and the, mem the members across the political spectrum. So there's really, a, um, a, uh, I guess, a, a point person for members across, across Congress. Which is huge. Which is huge. Because that is, there are very few issues you have something like that. Mm -hmm. and, and especially something that's going to be trusted on both sides of the aisle. Mm -hmm. So what are some other ways that, because a lot of the people in this room are not just crypto enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. They've been here since the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, these, are, these, a lot of the people here want to help. Mm -hmm. But I, and I know for myself, it was hard for me to know how to do that. So what are the, other than calling your elected representatives, what are some good ways that the average American can help push this agenda along? It's a good question. Um, I'd say if you're an industry participant, joining uh, industry organizations is really helpful. You can reach out directly to staff. You can reach out to your congressperson for a meeting too and you know, if, if they don't have time to meet with you, they, they'll probably hand you to a staffer. Um, so that's one avenue to push this along. They, Can I pause you for a second? Yeah. Just because they push you off to a staffer, that is not a bad thing. Oh, it's a... The staffers are the ones that educate. You know, you can't take a thousand meetings. You have 1,440 minutes in a day. There's only so much you, you can do, and they don't do much to begin with. So the, the idea <laughs> is, is that done. if you could get the ear of the staffer, I didn't say that, did I? <laughs> um, they're the ones that are gonna be educating the lawmaker. So, you know, these but are the people that help translate. 
but, but we do get nothing done because it's so partisan. So we get absolutely nothing done. We've seen, we've seen that played out this year. We've seen, I mean, as long as Congress has existed, it really doesn't get much done. That's no secret. And that's a, a source of a lot of frustration. So um, I guess that's what really, really uh, motivates the vision behind the caucus is that it could actually get a lot of things done, a lot of good things done. Um, but you had touched on another point that I just forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for me, it's really exciting. Um, the work that you've done, the work that the caucus has done, the work that Congressman Emmer has done, I mean, ultimately the goal is how do we strengthen our economy? We're mm -hmm. coming out of one of the most collective traumatic events in human history. Yep. And I, I personally believe we have not even begun to feel the effects of what is going to come out of this. And no, no industry is going to be more affected arguably than finance. Mm -hmm. So this is just a new avenue for us to be able to support the American economy, support the creation of jobs, the support of building new technologies. You know, who, we don't know where the next Tesla is going to come from. We don't know where the next, you know, whoever is going to come from. Yeah. I think Kristen Smith earlier said this uh, super well, but what is also unique with the crypto community, Web3 community, is uh, how, how grassroots uh, and motivated it is. Uh, it's, you don't really see that with any other issue, area of industry, uh, when it comes to communication with Hill. And I mean, crypto Twitter was paying attention to the hearing on Wednesday. Who else, you know, nobody really pays attention to hearings. Like, that's not a thing that people usually care about. I was getting about. live tweeted on the plane on the way here. Right, I know. And sometimes I'm like, maybe I'm just like on the regulatory, like lawmaker side of crypto Twitter. I don't know. but. Um, but it, it was, I mean, that's really cool to see and that's really important to the engagement. Like if it's just engagement on Twitter, engagement um, in general, like this mobilization is um, a force to be reckoned with for sure. That's incredible. Um, so on behalf of everyone here, we want to thank you for the work that you're doing. Thank and if you, you could all please help me doing. give a big round of applause for Lizzie Fallon. Thanks. She's been doing Thanks amazing work. Thanks for having work. me, everyone. All right. That's literally the second time I've done this. <laughs> I did it too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>